Well, here we are. I'm not sure how I managed to spend the amount of money I have on what you see right here, but I did. And it was totally not my plan, but it is what it is. So as you can see, we're gonna start putting in the meth injection or the whatever injection, whatever I'm gonna end up doing with this, but the whole kit in the car finally. And my whole goal for this was 600 and under to be like super budget friendly. Yeah. Well, if we're not counting the wrong parts I ordered and we're only counting the parts that I need to make this work, then we're over budget by at least two hundo. But let me tell you, you're not going to find the same quality of parts in your standard water meth kit that you can buy from any place. This is completely custom for my car, for my application, and it's using some better things that you're just not going to get in like a kit, you know? Like this is so much better of a value if you ask me. So I'm gonna quickly go over what I have here and yeah, we'll start with that. So first and foremost, as you can see, I've already kind of, whoops. I've already pre-mocked up uh, this whole piece here because I was just making sure that I had all the right fittings, which <laughs> lo and behold, I didn't, so good thing I did do this, uh, or I wouldn't be doing this today. So yeah, I've uh, mocked all this up. So as you can see, this right here, I'm going to take this off here and pull one of these out. Oh, jeez. A lot of this stuff is from Snow Performance, so these are Snow Performance nozzles. Um, I think they're three gallons per minute, and I wanted AN fittings. I didn't want the push lock fittings. I don't like them that you get on a lot of meth kits. So all of this stuff was purchased specifically to run, um, you know, AN lines to everything. But I got this really beautiful Boomba um, racing whatever. Uh, this is a really nice piece. So you see it's got the O-rings to go up against the cylinder head and then the manifold connects to this side. This will sit on top of the manifold and this wasn't my like preferred way of doing this, having them cross over like that, but it ended up working out and it's not that big of a deal. So basically I have, I'll give you the rundown here. So this is gonna be the line coming from the back of the car where I'm gonna be mounting the pump and the tank. So this line will run to this here, and then I have a um, 40 micron uh, filter here. So the nozzles themselves do have a little filter right there on top, a little screen filter, but that's only gonna catch so much. So, you know, just to make this better than what you're gonna get in any kit, I decided to go ahead and get this. This is just like a normal fuel filter for performance setup but it's 40 microns. AEM does sell a 40 micron filter for their kits, but it uses the push lock fittings and is $114. There ain't no freaking way I'm spending that kind of money on a 40 micron filter, which I paid like 20, 30 bucks. I think it was 20 bucks for this at Summit. So, <laughs> and then this goes into a check valve right here. I was thinking about either running a passive check valve like this or a uh, solenoid. They're gonna be about the same amount of money, but it's just so much easier not having to run extra wires to a solenoid that needs power, which is also another thing that can fail. So just a regular check valve here. You know, when flow is done, I don't have to worry about anything coming through the lines, like being sucked in and, you know, causing issues when I don't want it to. So that's that. And then it goes to an elbow here. 90 degree up to a Y and then it splits off here and then splits off again up there to each of the four ports. So that is that in a nutshell. And I think this will work pretty good. For the pump, I chose AEM. This is just like their standard pump. Um, the reason why I chose this one, this actually has a different part number than like what you find in most of their kits. I actually had to look around for this because I couldn't find it really. The reason why this one was different, this is right here. Eh, come on, pull it out. There we go. So this has 
regular pipe threads that go into the top where most of these that you find in the kits are the push lock fittings. So I opted to go with this one because I wanted to go with AN and pipe fitting. So that's what these are. These are to adapt that, which is I think a three inch pipe thread to dash four. So that's that. And then the final piece of the puzzle is this right here. This is for a Murray lawnmower. <laughs> and I hope this works out okay. Um, this was uh, a nice China special here. And um, it's got a little hole in the bottom there that I'll tap a uh, fitting into. And then the idea is that this will sit right here like that. Uh-huh. Look at that. I've, I'm gonna have to make some brackets to keep it level uh, because there is like a hump there, but it fits like perfectly otherwise. And then I'm just gonna, you know, tap a hole through here. It's like really thin sheet metal. So tap a hole and yeah, so that's gonna be that. And then I guess I'm gonna mount this underneath um, the trunk somewhere under there like that. I thought about mounting this in the trunk too, but mm, I'm like, well, it would make installation easier in the sense, but I would have to raise this up further. And, you know, I kind of want to be able to use like the, the cover that comes with the car to cover all this up to make it look nice and stock, you know, and actually maintain the use of my trunk. So, and I also thought, well, it's probably beneficial for the pump if it's outside the car underneath where it can get airflow. And yeah, so that's what I thought. So this is gonna mount underneath, basically right under this, which won't be too bad because it already comes with this mounting plate here with like isolators. You know, basically just gotta find a good spot, mark four holes, drill, run a bolt and a nut, and I'm good to go. And then while we're on the subject of the pink here, this was a, mm, I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try and see. So this is a stainless um, float. It's just simple, you know, when it's up like that, things are good. When it goes down there, things aren't good. I gotta see where the, I don't even know how the hell I'm even gonna mount it. I gotta probably, do it right here because I can stick it in through there and just put it out the side like that. Um, yeah, that's actually probably not a bad idea. So this is for um, letting the controller know, which I got, I didn't even cover this part of it all, but this controller here actually has a um, low fluid control mode. So like if it is low fluid, it will let you know. So you don't go, oh shoot, I'm gonna, you know, floor it. This will let you know that it's low fluid. And um, depending on how you set it up, it will shut things down. So that's what this is for. They, you know, once again, AEM and all them, they make their own cheapo, you know, floats and, and sensors and stuff that do the same thing, except they mark it up and ask way too much money for it. So this is a simple DIY solution that should do the trick. So we'll see how that works out. But yeah, this is the uh, AEM con uh, meth controller. So it's a progressive controller and I actually ordered the wrong one. This has a integrated Right here, this little port. This has an integrated map sensor, which is great, but the car already has a map sensor, so they make another one that actually just uses a zero to five volt input, which is what I wanted to do. And I somehow ordered this one instead, which is fine. I'll just go ahead and use it and um, make it work. So, you know, it's a nice progressive controller. You have a start PSI here, you can start it. You know, I'll probably actually start it at like mm, somewhere around there. Hell, maybe I'll even start it at 20. I don't know. I'm not sure where I'll start it at. And then full PSI goes all the way up to 40, which, yeah, I'm not going to hit. But I will probably be somewhere around there. So when it's all said and done. 
So it's good. I have a nice control there. And um, yeah, this should work really well. And it comes with a nice harness that I'm got pretty much all figured out where I want to put everything. So at this point, I got it all kind of figured out. It's just a matter of doing the work, which is probably going to take forever. It's probably going to take me a whole week because I'm just going to have to like work on it periodically here and there, bits and pieces at a time. So, which means it also could span a video or two, but we'll see. 